All right, today is the day, and today's video is gonna be kind of a mashup of all the things going on here in the studio. Um, first off, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who follow the channel. We just hit um, what they call monetization on YouTube, meaning that I can run ads. I don't know if I'm going to be doing that, but I do have the opportunity now not just to be able to run ads, but also to do live streaming and use the community thing where you can do surveys and other things, but other ways to connect with you, the followers of the channel. So that's kind of exciting. Um, just like a week ago, we hit the thousand subscribers that it's needed for that, and already we're surpassed that onto about 1,400, going on to 1,500 by the time this video is aired. And uh, about 4,000 hours of watch time this year, which also helped qualify us. So thank you for watching the channel. That's always nice to have people out there. Interesting to think now, instead of talking to the camera, I'm actually talking to a crowd of 1,500 people. Well, in effect, usually the videos are now hitting about 1,000 views each video. That's also nice to know that somebody is watching what you're spending your efforts on. So again, thank you very much. Um, this also kind of makes a turning point in what I'm doing here in the shop with the Arite Supercar Project. And you're gonna be seeing very soon that I'm adding a second project coming up. And that will also be another automotive project, but gonna be very, very different than the Arite Supercar. So be watching for that. Beyond just the things that you see with the Arite project and this other project coming up, you also, I will be showing you a couple of the projects I have in building some machinery to help me accomplish the aforementioned projects. You may have seen in some previous videos, I showed that I'm building this little small five axis CNC machine. It's gonna be more of a, like an engraving machine. Um, that's kind of been pushed a little bit to the back burner as I work on a 3D printer. I got rid of the 3D printer that I had before to move on to this thing that's gonna be a little more precise. Um, about the same build area, but also another larger format 3D printer. And another thing, I had a friend turn me on to a abandoned printer that was sitting in a scrapyard, was able to pick up at a very good price, and we will be refurbishing that machine to be a little bit larger five axis foam cutting CNC machine. That way I can use all of these machines to help scoot these little projects along and be a little more accurate in some of the fabrication of parts with those machines. Instead of just this being a total talking head video, I wanted to make sure I threw in a little bit of a project today. So we're gonna go take a look at how I built a little bracket to move the coils out of the center between the valve covers, moved a little bit over to the side of the engine to keep them a little cooler area, and make things a little more convenient, get the deck lid down so I have a little bit of clearance above the engine. Anyway, let's go take a look at that. So what I'm doing is building a little bracket to shift these coils, like I said, to the side of the engine. And to do that, it's made up of just a couple of pieces of a quarter inch aluminum plate welded together to create a couple of legs going up to support a plate. Now, the plate's a little bit wider than is probably needed to hold the coils, but it's gonna act a little bit as a heat shield as well. And these little legs bolt into the side of the block. There are a couple of uh, holes there that were actually Left over when uh, Toyota, they put little hooks. You can see one in the far side of the engine there, left there. These little hooks probably used to uh, put the engines into the car when they're assembled. Toyota probably figured it was cheaper to leave those hooks on there than the time and labor to take them off and uh, get those hooks back to the next uh, block of engines. So without the hooks needed to raise and lower this engine, just take the hook off and use those bolt holes to put the little legs on. Now I'm just gonna fit them there on the engine and then come back here, take my marks, put the legs in place, and of course, uh, TIG weld them into position. Now you might think that uh, my moving these coils over to the side right above the exhaust manifold is uh, kind of defeating the purpose of keeping them cooler, but being out in the open is a place to keep them cooler because there will be, unsurprisingly, there's a lot of air movement in the engine compartment. And this will allow some air movement across them, whereas them being captured and saturated and heat inside, covered over between the two valve covers is what I'm trying to get after. So once I got that thing all welded together, took it in, powder coated it, and you can see here, going back into those uh, 
mounting holes on the side of the block. This plate has a couple of little notches on the side that'll also be little retainers for the wiring. The wiring harness will come up underneath it, go through those little notches and plug into the coils. You also might think that uh, doing this uh, would have been a lot easier just to keep the coils centered between there. But when you're trying to buy a coil on plug set up for a Jay-Z engine, usually it runs between $70 to $100 per coil. Um, these LS coils, um, closer to $20. When you make uh, thousands of a part, you get the price down. Whereas a uh, coil on plug set up, a little less common, a little more expensive. All right, there you go. We have those coils moved over to the side in a little more convenient position for me to work on. And like I said, lower that deck lid. Um, again, in closing, I just wanted to thank you for watching the channel. I also wanted to talk about a few viewers that have been watching the channel. Now I should be mentioning all of you because I know you're all very important, but there have been a couple people that have been really dedicated to the channel and comment quite a bit, watch, go through and have watched the entire series. One of those being Trent Hill, way from the very beginning, Trent has been watching the channel and has um, commented almost on every single video. Um, I don't think he needs to do that every time, but it is nice to have somebody so dedicated. Also, there is Direct. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Direct is from India. He is an engineering student and he has also been very dedicated recently in watching all the videos and commenting quite a bit. It's nice to uh, talk with people in other places and understand what they're doing in their lives and how it's different from us here in the United States. Also, one of the followers out there is David Guyton. He is also a YouTuber who does um, patterns to making armor and does tutorials in building armor. If you wanna follow him, that is David Guyton on YouTube. But he is also interested in the cars as all of us are here. And in particular, I have two followers that are actually building cars. We have Franco Emiliani down in Argentina. I'm gonna put some pictures up here. You can see this is a little quick view of what he's doing. And you can follow Franco Emiliani. I'll have a link in the description, but he is posting some pictures of his project on Instagram. I also have another follower building a car, Peter Barrasso. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. But Peter lives here in the United States in California. He's building a car very similar in his production method in using plaster. And he started doing that before he came across this site. So it's very interesting how similar the process we've been using to produce that plug, that original model to take molds off of. Anyway, Peter is not posting his stuff on any of the social medias, but I'm sure he will be in the future. And maybe we will put a link to that when he does that. One more thing, before I uploaded this video to YouTube, I found in the comments from last week's video, a message from Brian at XS Motorworks and went and looked at his channel. Brian has a channel here on YouTube as well. And he is building a couple of uh, supercars, building two cars that are gonna look the same, but one's gonna be electric powered and the other one gas powered. And anyway, in his project, he has done something that is uh, noteworthy and goes right along with last week's video when we were talking about ways you could simplify a project like this. And what he has done is he has replaced this section of his cars with a Honda Civic meaning that he's taken the A-pillars, the windshield frame, and the doors. Anyway, this assembly here, all that work that I'm gonna to have to be going through and creating all these undercuts and trim for weather seals and stripping and the window fitment, all that stuff, that has been taken care of by using that whole idea. Anyway, brilliant method to take away a lot of the work that we talked about in the last video. So if you wanna go see what I'm talking about, you can go down to the description, that'll get you the right spelling to get to Brian's channel, which is NXS, not NXS, just XS, motor work. Anyway, just a little addition here as we're closing up this video, but thanks for stopping by, come back, see us again.